Takedown of the Guardian Breach is the second of the two takedowns added within Borderlands 3. While it released almost three years ago, I've decided to try my hand at making the most comprehensive guide yet as a resource to help new and returning players, and maybe even provide some info that can help out long-term players. Guardian Takedown contains two large sections of mobbing, a mid-boss, and an invincible-style raid boss, all rewarding a large variety of gear. In this guide, I will be walking you through the stages of this takedown, giving you a list of enemies you can expect to see, sharing full strategy breakdowns of the bosses, providing some insight into some gear that you may want and showing you each of the major skips to save on a lot of time during your runs. If you would like to skip to any of these sections, they will be timestamped in the description. Before we get into the takedown itself, let's quickly go over normal takedown versus true takedown. Normal takedown mode is the average experience scaled for one player, while true takedown mode scales the entirety of the takedown as if there were four players in your lobby. This means that there's more enemies during mobbing sections and all enemies, including the bosses, have higher health pools. Dedicated drop rates stay the same though, which means farming on true takedown mode will only provide more world drops. True takedown mode is generally more of a challenge mode for if you are looking to test yourself. Now into the actual content of the takedown, we will be listing the stages and the enemy types that will be found within. Guardian takedown as a whole can be broken down into eight stages, which we'll call Entry, Crystals 1, Sanctum 1, Anathema, Wildlife, Crystals 2, Sanctum 2, and finally Scourge. These stages all have varying enemy types which you'll encounter. During Entry, Wildlife, and Storage, you'll encounter all of the various necrobugs, including Vanda, Manta, Korak, Jira, and Manticores. These are all armor and flesh health bars. During Crystals 1 and 2, Sanctum 1 and 2, and Anathema and Scourge, you'll encounter Guardians and their various types such as Spectres, Wraiths, Seras, Heralds, and new to the Guardian takedown is Diadems and Revenants. These are all armor and shield health bars. With these enemies, it is also worth noting that if you find yourself low on ammo, shooting the Red Guardian Souls, which spawn from Guardians you kill, not only prevent Guardian evolutions, which makes them far stronger, but will also resupply your your ammo stock entirely. Diadems are completely immune to all damage unless dealt to the big red orbs on their back, which is their crit spot. And during any of the mobbing sections, revenants are able to spawn. They aren't guaranteed, however, you will have a visual effect around the border of your screen when they're around. They only ever spawn in pairs and usually only show up at most once during your run. Be wary of spectres and seras when near ledges. Spectres will often pounce on you and seras will sometimes charge towards you from within the air. Both attacks have a very high knockback to them. While both sets of attacks are decently telegraphed, with Spectres quite obviously starting a pounce, or Seras will begin to glow before dive bombing you. The attacks do still come out quite fast, so it is very much so worth paying attention and keeping your positioning in mind. Between all these enemies that you will be encountering, you will need every single damage type. Be sure you have made necessary preparations with your elemental coverage. Both Anathema and Scourge have very large armor bars, followed by a smaller shield bar, so be especially sure you have coverage for those. Also keep in mind that while many of these enemies are familiar in look and fun, function, they are far stronger than usual. Now to start breaking down each stage individually, we will start with stage 1, Entry. Upon first entering the Guardian Takedown, you'll be greeted by many Necrobugs. So right off the bat, you'll be wanting to come equipped with strong incendiary weaponry with perhaps some corrosive or cryo to deal with the Korax and Manticore armor bars. Once this area is fully cleared out, the door at the far end will open and you can exit. Sometimes this door doesn't open and it's usually because that there is still an enemy left and it just didn't aggro onto you correctly. Walk around the arena a bit and eventually you should find it. If this is your first time running the Guardian Takedown, or if you died in your last attempt, you'll have to do some light parkour to hit a button which activates the crystals to be charged. Stand on these platforms until each is fully charged to progress. Once through the door, there's a small section with some more necro bugs, but this is completely unrequired and you can just run right by them and make your way to Stage 2, Crystals 1. When you first arrive, a wave of Guardians will spawn. Take this out and your waypoint will update telling you to press a button. Use this time to gather ammo from crates if needed, wait for your action source to recharge or or whatever else you may need. As once you press this button, all three crystals will activate and all three will begin to deplete. While initially it may seem like it's a balancing act, it is not. If you're playing solo especially, do these one at a time, as stepping onto a platform will begin spawning waves of guardians through portals which will not stop until that crystal is fully charged. It doesn't matter what order you do these in, however I prefer starting with either the left or the right crystals as they spawn less enemies at once. These two crystals will have one portal further outward which will spawn waves of guardians while at about midway through a another portal will open, this one closer and more to the side, which will spawn diadems. The center crystal can spawn guardians from three potential portal locations, either at the left, right, or center. More will spawn after each wave is taken out. The crystal platforms themselves have three potential colors to them to indicate various things. Blue means the crystal is charging, this happens when only the vault hunter is standing on the platform. White means the crystal is neither charging or depleting, this is when either the vault hunter has recently left the platform, as there is a small grace period before it begins to deplete, or that a guardian is also 
crystal on the platform alongside the Vault Hunter. And orange means that the crystal is depleting, which happens when there is no Vault Hunter present on the platform. The crystals you are not standing on are still constantly depleting, meaning that being efficient with your time at each crystal is very important. Trying to keep as many Guardians away from the platform as possible is T so you can quickly move on to the next, as if you don't get together crystals in time, things did explode. -y. If you're struggling with this, a very, very big help is pets. Zane's clone, Flax pets, and Auto Bear, or to a lesser extent Iron Cub for Moe's, are all fantastic at keeping Guardians away from the platforms, as for some reason they prefer to target pets over Vault Hunters way more. Place your pets outside of the platform and closer to enemy spawn portals to get the absolute most out of them. It is also worth noting that once all three crystals are charged, all the Guardians within the area will be killed. Once all the crystals are charged, a large door will open and you will make your way to Stage 3, Sanctum 1. Immediately upon entry, you will be greeted with a few more Guardian portals. Take these out as you progress further in. If you aren't prepared for even more enemies, do not cross the bridge until you clear out the first section, as another portal will open. Once you've cleared all the Guardians, the door ahead will open and you'll enter a much larger room up on a higher platform. If you stay on this upper platform and successfully clear out all the Guardians, moving platforms will appear for you to jump across. If you fall into the lower section, however, you'll have to do some more mobbing until a jump pad back up will activate so you can try again. Watch out for the Sarahs during your platforming as they will try to charge and knock you off. Once across, you will find your reward, stage 3.5, the dunk. Stage 4 is Anathema, which you will encounter after sliding down this large ramp. Be sure you land on the center platform, as if you miss, you will fall into the water and die. I still do this sometimes if I'm not paying enough attention. Anathema himself is a large guardian with two very strong armor bars and a final squisher shield bar. We'll talk more on Anathema in our bosses section. After Anathema, you will get a checkpoint and move on to Stage 5, Wildlife. Very similar to entry, Wildlife is a large open section with all of the various types of necrobugs. Once again, to progress, you will have to defeat all of them before some platforms at the far end will show up, allowing you to safely jump across to your next location. A few jump pads later, and you will arrive at Stage 6, Crystals 2. Similar to Crystals 1, you'll press a button to activate all three crystals at the same time. This time though, a jump pad separates each section. Charge the nearest crystal first before making your way to either the left or right crystal to save the most time. Also keep in mind that you do not have to jump back to the center platform as there's a jump pad to each section from each section. Due to these platforms being much more close quarters and having a a higher enemy density, you will need to be able to have weaponry that can keep up. Large ammo pools, fast fire rate, or large area of effect weapons will be incredibly helpful. Whereas in Crystals 1, all three crystals had to be charged to kill all the guardians surrounding you, here all nearby guardians will be killed after each individual crystal is charged so that you can quickly run to the next without interference. Once all are charged, another large door will open on the initial platform with the activation button and allow you to enter into Stage 7, Sanctum 2. Sanctum 2 is another section of just general mobbing with a few portals opening at various locations as you kill the guardians, though overall the first part of this section is quite light. After you take out everything in this first area, a jump pad will activate for you and move on to the next. This section is very open with a lot of holes and ledges that you can fall or be pushed into, so be very careful. Make use of a lot of cover and keep an eye out for anything that may try to shove you off. Once everything is dead though, another jump pad will open and you'll be on your way to Storge the Invincible. Storge is another, even larger guardian, also with two very strong armor bars and a final, again, squishier shield bar. We'll talk more about storage in the bosses section, but before that, let's talk about how you can save some time with skips. Now that you know how the stages go, or are supposed to go, it's time for me to show you everything that you can actually skip over in Guardian Takedown, including two entire stages. First skip is pretty quick, and that is a door skip. Most of these big triangular doors actually don't have proper collision on the top part, and if you can jump at it with enough height, you can mantle through. This works at the start while you're waiting for the countdown by climbing the ammo vendor and jumping towards the door, and it also works on the checkpoint after Anathema. While a lesser time save, you can just walk right up along the edge and jump through the door before it is fully open. Next, we have another door skip, but this one works a bit differently. After we clear Crystals 1 and enter Sanctum 1, usually you have to fight through all these guardians to get the door to open. Instead, you can just climb up to the left-hand corner of the door, grouch, and simply crawl your way through. This also leads us into Sanctum 1 Rocket Jump, which will allow us to fully skip the rest of this section as well, including the parkour. 
tower. Jumping down to the lower level, you can come over to one of the two pillars on either side of the dunk. Jumping up against the ramp section and shooting at your feet with a plumage will give you enough height to turn and mantle your way up to the ledge. This can be difficult, and on any Vault Hunter that isn't Zane, you will need a low level plumage to avoid downing yourself. It can also be done with a Ruby's Wrath, though it's definitely much harder. With some practice though, you can be pretty consistent with it. There are actually two alternatives to this rocket jump, however. By staying at the upper level and sliding with a snow drift and jumping at the right time to gain speed and keep momentum, right at the ledge you can rocket jump under your feet. With the low gravity, this allows you to make it from the upper platform to the dunk. While far more difficult to get the timing correct, it looks way cooler to pull off. However, the final method, and definitely the easiest with the least amount chance of downing yourself, is if you are playing on Mayhem 10 or any of the Mayhem levels, having Speed Demon active and stacking it fully, you can literally just run and jump across the entire gap. And finally, we have Wildlife Skip. You can run through this entire section and take it all the way to the end, equip a snow drift, and slide off the edge. Right after sliding, you have a brief moment of still being able to jump even after you're off the ledge. Time this right and you can make it all the way across this gap where you can mantle up to the platform. The more movement speed you have, the easier this gets. However, the only absolutely necessary piece of gear for this to work is a snow drift. A toboggan can also work, but a snow drift is far better. If you're playing on anything other than Mayhem 11, the Speed Demon modifier can make it far easier as well. And finally, let's talk about our bosses, and we'll start off with Anathema the mid-boss. Anathema himself honestly doesn't do very much. He'll move around the arena, charge at you, and has a very high bullet reflect chance. The reflect itself isn't a big deal, as he will still take damage from the shots that get reflected, however it is still worth trying to hit his crit spot if you can. The biggest threat Anathema poses is his flame jet attack. Anathema will raise his hands up and large flaming pillars will shoot out from the ground with very high knockback which can easily send you off the edge of hit. This attack can be cancelled if you send him into immunity. Within his arena, guardians will also spawn. The fight itself is less about Anathema and more about the pattern and properly traversing his arena. After you take out each section of Anathema's health bar, he will become immune and begin charging a large explosion that will take up almost the entirety of the platform. You do actually have a small section in each of the corners that you can stand in where the explosion won't hit, just behind the jump pads. But if you do want to go the jump pad route, which I would highly recommend for you Zane players as you can use that momentum for more damage, each jump pad will take you up to the higher platforms. Up here, a few more guardians will spawn and will potentially have a copy of Anathema, which will also begin to charge an explosion. More of the corners will fill up with these copies the lower health the real Anathema gets. Even if you do find yourself jumping to a platform with an Anathema clone, they are delayed from the real Anathema, which means that you do have a pretty decent window to jump off of the platform after Anathema's explosion, but before the clone's explosion. This delay can pose a bit of a problem, however, as you can get through Anathema's next section and send him charging again before the clones have actually had time to explode themselves. This is something that is definitely worth paying attention to, and if you can't make it to a platform that is empty, you will just want to stay in one of the corners of the main platform. If you stay on one of the upper platforms for too long after Anathema gets out of his immunity phase, he will teleport up to wherever you are. That's about it for this fight though. Follow this pattern, hit him between immunities, and you'll reach the checkpoint of Guardian Takedown. Scourge is our invincible class boss of Guardian Takedown, and while having a little more to the fight, it follows the same emphasis on a pattern as Anathema. Scourge himself will relentlessly chase down the Vault Hunter as long as he is in his active state, only stomping to attack, either through basic melee hits or using his whip. The whip has three possible attacks, all choreographed differently. If he swings the whip down towards the ground, he'll launch one to three shockwaves that home in on the Vault Hunter, jump over these to dodge them. If he swings horizontally, large crystal spikes will launch out in a fan towards the player. Dodge these by either going between or below them. If he swings the whip towards you and it makes contact, you'll be pulled towards him, often leading into a follow-up attack. This can often be dodged simply by running behind him. After you take out one section of his health bar, he will teleport away before dropping back down to the middle of the arena, being completely immune as he begins to charge a large explosion. This explosion will instantly down you and can only be dodged by breaking line of sight and getting behind a pillar. However, this is 
is not the best solution. When he drops in normal takedown mode, he will spawn two diadems and four on true takedown mode. If you run up to storage and lead the diadems towards him before getting them to explode, it'll knock him from his immunity and completely expose his head for easy crits. This can be done either by getting close enough for the diadems to explode themselves or by getting them close to storage and killing them yourself. On normal mode, if you get both diadems to explode on him, it'll knock out a good chunk of his health. On true takedown mode though, if you get all four to explode on him, it can actually bring his health all the way down through that section and will immediately knock him right back into his immunity phase. After you get through the three sections of the first bar, he will teleport you away to do some mobbing in this larger section. There will be a few portals summoning guardians and it is required that you kill them to progress. However, you do not have to kill every single guardian in this section, so keep an eye on the spawn location of the portal to know when you've done enough to leave. When you return to the arena, Storge will be recharging his armor bar. Use the jump pad to go up to him and melee the crystal he's attached to. While his armor has regen, you do not need to work through his immunity phases again until you drop him down to a third of his next armor bar. This is the general flow for the rest of the fight. Take out each section. At the end of the second armor bar, you will be teleported to one of four smaller locations in which you will need to take out every guardian spawn before coming back to smash his crystal. Once you get through a shield bar, you have successfully completed takedown at the guardian breach. Now to quickly go over some gear, the Revolter is your best friend, gaining 200% shock damage for pretty much free on a majority of characters very easily, along with a 50% bonus to your fire rate is incredible for guardian takedown as there is a lot of shields. The Plasma Coil is probably one of the strongest SMGs in the game, having some of the highest base damage and very high DPS. It is also locked to shock and radiation on its mode, which means you are guaranteed to get a usable variant. The Free Radical is very similar, it is just a best-in-class pistol, also locked to shock damage. And the Light Show is a very good option if you are looking for a very fast-firing multi-pellet gun. Of course, this is all DLC gear. If you don't have any of the DLC, don't you worry, there are still some very good options in the base game. For shields, while not giving raw damage, the Frozen Heart or Frozen Snowshoe can be very good options as it can help you a lot with crowd control, which of course is very good for keeping guardians away from your crystals, but also if you pair this with an Icebreaker artifact, then you are actually getting damage out of it. As for guns, things like the Butcher have a very large ammo pool with very high damage and fast fire rate, just amazing overall DPS. The Monarch is the same sort of thing, it's many pellets, very fast fire rate, very large magazine, and the Kaozen is one of the best base game SMGs. All three of these also come in every single element, meaning that you can use them in every section if you get the right variants. Another very good option for SMGs, better than the Kaozen even, is the Needle Gun, but it can be more difficult to get, but it also comes in all elements. And the Multi-Tap, while locked to non-elemental, does do cryo damage with the rockets it fires out to marked enemies, but most importantly, the area coverage that this provides is absolutely insane. And finally is the Plague Bearer, which is my go-to for Anathema and Storage, it just makes such quick work of every phase of them, along with being very good at pre-firing for portals and taking out a lot of enemies very quickly in an area. But yeah, that's about everything that you should need to be successful in Guardian Takedown. Whether you watch this video to get some help, learn something new, or just to be entertained, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please definitely consider leaving a like, comment, subscribe, all that. In the description, there will be a link to my Twitch channel and my Discord if you'd like to come hang out. But with that all being said, I hope to see you guys in the next one.